As in many areas of life, there's a big divide in the martial arts world. Often the division is made between traditional martial arts and modern martial arts or combat sports. I recently made a whole video about how I personally define traditional martial arts and what problems I witness in the way it is structured. Yet I cannot disagree that the term traditional martial arts is still confusing when debating the world of martial arts. For this reason, in this Martial Arts Explored episode, I decided to make a video getting down to the roots of what creates this division and why we should stop calling traditional martial arts fake by clarifying the difference between traditional martial arts and fantasy-based martial arts to better address and articulate the problem and the search for a solution. First of all, I wanted to share that the first time I personally heard the definition fantasy-based martial arts was when I met Matt Thornton, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt who found a global organization known as Trade Blast Gym, or simply SBG. Decades ago, coach Matt Thornton used to be a practitioner and instructor in Jeet Kune Do, a martial art initially created by Bruce Lee with the vision to create an efficient martial art that included and combined techniques from various martial arts. Unfortunately, it seems that over the years, especially after the passing of Bruce Lee, the community of Jeet Kune Do started to focus less on functionality and more in simply incorporating various martial arts technique without testing it in live sparring to see whether it is functional. Coach Matt was able to perceive this flaw and he coined a few terms which explain the existing issues very well. First of all, he introduced the concept of aliveness in martial arts, referring to the fact that if the techniques are practiced in prearranged patterns with a cooperating partner who does not offer a live resistance, trying to counter the technique by various means, then the martial art is falling quote unquote dead patterns, which do not develop absolutely necessary abilities when dealing with an attacker who is really aiming to harm or defeat you. With no live resistance, aka aliveness, there is no way to really distinguish techniques which are functional, while martial arts who pressure test their techniques constantly, such as in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu when grappling, or Muay Thai when sparring, end up mastering and polishing techniques and approaches which are highly effective thus making them, as Matt Thornton would call them, functional martial arts. Meanwhile, the martial arts which follow the so-called dead patterns tend to believe that their techniques work just because it looks effective or because their instructors told their students that it works, which eventually leads this belief to become a fantasy, thus creating the final term coined by Coach Thornton, which is fantasy-based martial arts. When looking into online debates on martial arts forums, Traditional martial arts often get criticized and looked down upon as unrealistic or sometimes are simply called straightforwardly fake. And I have to admit that I have been guilty of making this claim as well. While I have defined in a number of my videos that my definition of traditional martial arts is that of martial arts which rely heavily on tradition, still, this term does not necessarily fully address the issues which people are actually trying to point out when criticizing traditional martial arts. That issue is when certain martial arts claim to be effective in actual fighting, while many a time the reality is quite far from it. It is common that the martial arts, which make the unrealistic claim without actually pressure testing, fall into the category of traditional martial arts. Thus, many martial artists or combat sports practitioners tend to call traditional martial arts fake. Get to be fair, not all traditional martial arts lack pressure testing as an example yes. of judo, while also modern martial arts systems such as the Russian Sistema or some so-called reality-based self-defense systems suffer from the same condition as the fake martial arts. This is why I would like to encourage all viewers watching this video and these debates to consider the term fantasy-based martial arts or FBMA instead to better define and point out the problem. In order to fully employ it to use, I would like to further explore it in detail on what exactly it is. As most of you know, my main martial arts experience for many years consisted of Aikido, which is by many categorized as both a traditional martial art and also a fake martial art. And I personally believe it is done for good reasons. While Aikido Online is heavily criticized for being ineffective, as I explained in one of my videos called Why Aikido is Disliked by BGD MMA Practitioners, the criticism is actually not because Aikido is simply a traditional martial art, and not even primarily because it is not effective as a means of fighting or self-defense, but mainly because most Aikido people believe and fondly claim that it is effective. And I personally know how that works very well. For many years, I also believed that it does work, until I eventually tried to test it under actual live pressure of sparring and grappling, where a decade of my Aikido training did not work at all. In this case, it would be easy, and I believe correct, to say that for years I was living in a fantasy, believing that my Aikido was functional. Yet what made it mostly a fantasy was the fact that I was believing that I would be able to manage myself in a fight or a self-defense situation, believing in it only based on hearsay and stories, 
without any actual evidence or pressure testing. I find this phenomenon to be best explained by what is known as the Dunning and Kruger effect. This phenomenon was defined by social psychologists David Dunning and Justin Kruger, initially by a study called Unskilled and Unaware of It, how difficulties in recognizing one's own incompetence lead to inflated self-assessments, which explored the criminal case of Martha Wheeler, who robbed banks while his face was covered with lemon juice, which he believed would make it invisible to the surveillance cameras. This belief was based on his misunderstanding of the chemical properties of lemon juice as an invisible ink. To further understand how this phenomenon works, Dunning and Kruger later released another study called Why People Fail to Recognize Their Own Incompetence, which pointed out that this phenomenon derives from the person's ignorance of a given activity's standards of performance. To put it more simply, if I have no education in singing and no understanding what criteria of singing exists, I may as well come to a conclusion that my singing is good, just because it appears good to me, or if, for example, my best friend who's also uneducated in singing would say it is good, and I would come to a conclusion that it is enough information to define my singing as great. As crazy as this sounds, it happens all the time, and there are many recorded cases, such as where terrible singers come to qualifications of singing shows as American Idol and misperform horribly, in the end being surprised that the judges did not like their singing since they personally believe their singing is amazing. At first, it seems that these bad singers are simply crazy, but as Dunning and Kruger explain, or to realize where he or she actually stands in the ability to really perform. Unfortunately, this is exactly what happens in martial arts too. If we take my personal story as an example, before stepping into the ring with an MMA fighter to spar, I had never really sparred with an experienced fighter. At best, I had a few sparring matches with my friends who knew little of fighting themselves, and while I barely made my Aikido work against them, compiled with all the stories of my instructors telling me how Aikido would naturally come into use when I would be really attacked, or that it is designed to defend against an untrained attacker, I believed that I could handle myself at least to some degree. If you know my story, you also know that after rolling with a BGD blue belt and eventually sparring with an MMA fighter, I realized that there is almost nothing that I could apply from my 13 years of training Aikido when dealing with actual fighting pressure. In other words, I knew nothing about the criteria which makes a person capable of dealing with an actual unwilling opponent. Or to see it even more simply, I knew nothing about real fighting or grappling and having no understanding of what real fighting and grappling is, it was easy for me to believe that I am good enough at it since I had nothing in my mind to compare or assess it with. And trust me, this was not a unique case. This same story happens all over the world year after year in fantasy-based martial arts. To avoid repeating this story, I sincerely hope that anyone listening to this video will look at themselves and will ask, how do I really know what fighting is? Why do I think I am capable of fighting or defending myself? What is the evidence of my ability in this particular field? And is it not really limited in only performing choreographed movements together with a cooperative partner or fighting only under a very limited set of rules against a minimum amount of resistance or factors such as, for example, punches only to the core area?